You're watching KSG News where you get all the latest updates from across the globe to help with your exam preparations. We begin with GS Paper 3. India has pushed back deadlines for coal-fired power plants to adopt new emission norms by up to three years and allowed utilities that missed the new target to continue operating after paying a penalty, according to a government notice. India had initially set a 2017 deadline for thermal power plants to install flue gas desulfurization units that cut emissions of sulfur dioxide, but that was postponed to varying deadlines for different regions, ending in 2022. Now, what is this all about? The new order, dated 1st of April 2021 from the Environment Ministry, says plants near populous regions and the capital city of New Delhi will have to comply by 2022, while utilities in less polluting areas have up to 2025 to comply or retire units. Operators of coal-fired utilities, including state-run NTPC Limited and industry groups representing private companies such as Reliance Power and Adani Power have long been lobbying for dilution of the pollution standards, citing high compliance costs. The latest notice follows suggestions from the Power Ministry that plants be given deadlines to adopt norms in line with the severity of pollution in the region where they are located. A task force will be constituted by the Central Pollution Control Board to categorize plants in three categories on the basis of their location to comply with the emission norms, the Environment Ministry said in its order. In case of non-compliance, a penalty of up to 0.2 rupees, that is $0.0027, will be levied for every unit of electricity produced. The Power Ministry said in January that a graded action plan could help avoid immediate increase in power prices in various relatively clean areas of India and avoid unnecessary burden on power utilities and consumers. Indian cities have some of the world's most polluted air. Thermal power companies, which produce three-fourths of the country's electricity, account for some 80% of its industrial emissions of particulate matter, sulfur and nitrous oxides and which cause lung diseases, acid rain and smog. In some more updates related to GS Paper 3, scientists have developed a new technique to track the huge bubbles of gas threaded with magnetic field lines which are ejected from the sun disrupting space weather and causing geomagnetic storms, satellite failures and power outages, the Department of Science and Technology said on the 1st of April. The new technique will be used in India's first solar mission Aditya L1. Now, what does this really mean? As the ejections from the sun, technically called coronal mass ejections or CMEs, cause various disturbances of the space environment, forecasting their arrival time is very important. However, forecasting accuracy is hindered by limited CME observations in interplanetary space, the DST said. Software named Computer-Aided CME Tracking Software, called the Cactus, based on a computer vision algorithm, was so far used to detect and characterize such eruptions automatically in the outer corona, where these eruptions cease to show accelerations and propagate with a nearly constant speed. However, this algorithm could not be applied to the inner corona observations due to the vast acceleration experienced by these eruptions. This severely limited the capability to track the eruptions as CMEs accelerate in the lower corona. Moreover, with the advancement in space technology, there has been a tremendous increase in the amount of data obtained from spacecraft, according to the statement. Identifying and tracking solar eruptions in a huge number of images can become tedious if done manually. A research led by Ritesh Patel, Vaibhav Panth and Professor Dipankar Banerjee from Aryabhatta Research Institution of Observational Sciences, Nenital, an autonomous institute under the Department of Science and Technology, along with their collaborators from Royal Observatory of Belgium, has led to the development of an algorithm, CME's identification in inner solar corona or the Cisco, to detect and track the accelerating solar eruptions in the lower corona. 
Cisco has been successfully tested on several eruptions observed by space observatories including Solar Dynamics Observatory and Solar Terrestrial Relations Observatory, Proba 2 swap launched by NASA and ESA respectively. The parameters determined by Cisco are useful to characterize these eruptions in the lower corona, a region where the properties of such eruptions are less known. An implementation of Cisco on the large volume of data available from space observatories mentioned above will be helpful to improve our understanding of eruptions in the inner corona. As India's first solar mission, Aditya L1 will be observing this region of the solar corona, implementation of Cisco on the Aditya L1 data will provide new insight into the CME properties in this less explored region. The research was published in the Solar Physics Journal. And in some more updates related to GS Papers 3, Researchers at the Indian Institute of Science have developed artificial enzymes that they said can successfully block reactivation and replication of the human immunodeficiency virus or HIV in the host's immune cells. Made from vanadium pentoxide nanosheets, these nanozymes work by mimicking a natural enzyme called glutathione peroxidase that helps reduce oxidative stress levels in the host cells which is required to keep the virus in check as per IISC statement on the 1st of April. Now, what is the significance of this? The study published in Embo Molecular Medicine was led by Amit Singh, Associate Professor and Welcome Trust DBT India Alliance, Senior Fellow at the Department of Microbiology and Cell Biology and Center for Infectious Diseases Research and Govinda Sami Mugesh, Professor at the Department of Inorganic and Physical Chemistry. The advantage is that the nanozymes are stable inside biological systems and do not mediate any unwanted reactions inside the cells. They are also quite easy to prepare in the lab. There is currently no way to eliminate HIV from a patient's body completely. Anti-HIV drugs are only successful in suppressing the virus. They fail at eradicating HIV from infected cells. The virus hides inside the host's immune cells in a latent state and stably maintains its reservoir. When the levels of toxic molecules such as hydrogen peroxide increase in the host cells, leading to a state of increased oxidative stress, the virus gets reactivated. It emerges from hiding and begins replicating again. A few years ago, Amit Singh's team developed a biosensor to measure oxidative stress levels in HIV-infected immune cells in real time. They found that to come out of latency and reactivate, HIV needs very little oxidative stress. One way to prevent reactivation is to keep the oxidative stress constantly low, which would lock the virus in a permanent state of latency. Enzymes such as glutathione peroxidase are essential for this process. They convert toxic hydrogen hydrogen peroxide to water and oxygen. However, inducing the host cells to produce more quantities of these enzymes could disrupt the tightly regulated cellular redox machinery. More updates related to GS Paper 3. 2nd of April is recognized internationally and celebrated as World Autism Awareness Day every year. It is a day when member states of the United Nations are encouraged to raise awareness about people living with autistic spectrum disorders, including autism and Asperger's syndrome. According to the United Nations, the COVID-19 pandemic has exposed and heightened glaring inequalities around the world, especially when it comes to income and wealth distribution access to health care, protection under the law, and political inclusion. Persons with autism have long faced many of these inequalities, which have only been further exacerbated by the pandemic. Now, what is autism? The UN states autism to be a lifelong neurological condition that manifests during early childhood, irrespective of gender, race or socio-economic status. The term autism spectrum refers to a range of characteristics, appropriate support, accommodation and acceptance of this neurological variation allow those on the spectrum to enjoy equal opportunity and full and effective participation in society. Autism is mainly characterized by its unique social interactions, non-standard ways of learning, keen interests in specific subjects, inclination to routines, challenges in typical communications and particular ways of processing sensory information. The UN has had a theme for the celebration of the World Autism Awareness Day every year since 2012. This year, the theme is Inclusion in the Workplace, Challenges and Opportunities in a Post-Pandemic World. 
the UN General Assembly had declared the 2nd of April as World Autism Awareness Day so as to highlight the need to help improve the quality of life of those with autism so they can lead full and meaningful lives as an integral part of society. The resolution was passed on the 1st of November 2007 and was adopted on the 18th of December 2007. That's it in this edition of KSG News. Stay tuned for more such short, concise and informative videos.